All right guys, so today we're gonna to be showing you how we build your bumper. If you wanna know where you can get one, um, there's a link in the description to our website where you can go and pick one up for yourself. But for now, just enjoy the video and watch how we build it. All right, so this is the first step of every bumper build we do. We take a sheet of steel and put it on the plasma table. And as you can see here, the plasma table leaves these little notches in the steel wherever we need to make a bend so that we can stick it in the bender later and get the bends perfect every time. After it lays down the bend lines, it cuts out all the pieces that we need to fit the bumper together. Alright, so the next step is getting slag off your pieces. When it comes out of the um, plasma cutter, it leaves slag on the edges and you just have to grind it off. I'll show you guys right here. You can see the slag on all the sides. As you can see, the piece is nice and clean now. It's nice and shiny around all the edges. But the next step is to make sure that all of the, the actual edges of where you're gonna weld are nice and clean because you want a nice clean place to weld so that you don't get any pores in your weld. So I'm gonna do that piece next. So when you've grinded all of your pieces, which I have a lot more to do, uh, the next step is going to be bending everything, and I'll show you that in a second. Alright, now that I've finished grinding all the parts, I usually put one pile of parts that's not supposed to get bent, and then one pile of parts that is supposed to get bent, so I can just grab my pile of parts and bring it over to the bender. Alright, so here's the assembly stage. You can see that I'm using clamps to hold down all the pieces so that when I weld it, it doesn't have anywhere to move to basically. It'll help clamp it nice and tight because a lot of times when you weld, it gets hot and the metal likes to warp into weird positions. So here I'm, I'm clamping everything down so that it'll be nice and straight when I'm done. I also make sure to tack everything first because if you tack it in place, the tacks will hold it from moving while you're welding it. And we wanna do that to the whole bumper so that everything's nice and perfect before we go ahead and start welding. Right here, you can see that I'm going back and forth from side to side and it's because I'm trying to keep the heat in different areas of the bumper so that no area is too hot to the point where it's going to warp. And so I just do the same one from side to side because I'm kind of OCD. Alright, so now that I've gotten this whole thing welded up, the next step is to wait for it to cool, then we'll take it out of the jig, and then we have to grind all the outside corners. 
all the outsides of each of these seams. This is before the seams have been ground out. Once we've gone through and ground out all the seams to make sure that they're perfectly clean, we go through and weld them. Once we've welded all the seams, we go back with a sanding disc, as you can see here and we grind all of the welds flat and then in the corners we grind the welds to a point and then once we have a nice smooth straight point it's really easy to round that point so that it looks just like the bent pieces so that you can't tell the difference between a bent piece and a welded piece. All right, and here's the bumper all ground up. All the corners are rounded off. There's one or two little touch-up spots, but otherwise it's pretty much done and ready to go into the blasting room. Here you're seeing a process called sand blasting. Basically an air compressor forces sand through a hose really quickly and then the sand hits the steel sanding it to a perfect finish so that when we powder coat it it has a perfect surface to adhere to. This makes it so that the powder coat will last as long as possible. Here you can see Caleb applying powder coat, but before the powder coat can be applied, the steel has to be preheated in the oven behind it for 10 minutes so that when you apply the powder coat, the powder coat will melt on contact and it'll stick really nicely. Then once you apply all the powder coat, you have to stick it back in the oven for 10 minutes to bake because powder coat is a bake on finish, which is what makes it so long lasting and so durable. Well that's it, that's your finished bumper and uh, just one last thing I wanted to say was we're super grateful for everyone that buys our product and if you ever have a problem just let us know and we'll do our best to help you. Otherwise we really want this to be a, a great bumper for you for a long time and we just wanted to say thank you for buying our products. This is what to expect when you open the bumper from home and got to cut the tape. Staples. This is where your hardware bag will be with your light and that's all.